Hello, everyone. You are listening to Those Other Girls with Mallory and Friends. I'm Mallory. And I'm her friend, Melanie. And we are changing culture and bringing back traditional values. <laughs> Melanie, you are so funny. Anyway, welcome back, you guys. We have Melanie. She's back. I don't know. I, just, I don't know. What I'm I'm back and I'm better She's... than ever. <laughs> yes. We have not had Melanie um, do a TCAP in a hot second. Yes. Um, let's see. Should we do housekeeping or actually you tell us a little bit. No, let's do housekeeping first and then we'll catch up with okay. you. We're super excited to have Melanie back. First, I want to do a couple housekeeping things. Oops, spoilers. The new episode is coming out this Wednesday. I'm reviewing episodes one through three of the new Pretty Little Liars, Original Sin. Um, yes, so watch episodes one through three. It's on HBO Max if you want to not have it spoiled. Or if you're like, I don't know if I, I should watch it. I'm not sure. Well, then watch, listen to the um, my review. It'll have spoilers. Oops, spoilers is in the title. So don't ever be like, oh my God, I can't believe you spoiled it. Yeah, I'm going to spoil it. It's called Oops, Spoilers. Um, so you can listen to the review and then decide if you want to continue with the other episodes. It's on HBO Max. That's coming out on Wednesday. You're not going to want to miss it. Um, also, too, if you guys are watching and listening, please, please, please leave a review. Also, too, if you are watching from TikTok, um, not to brag, but TikTok kind of blew up a little bit. Um, if you are watching from TikTok, welcome. Thank you so much. This is a podcast you're going to absolutely love. If you're hate watching from TikTok, welcome so much. It's a podcast that I hope you learn something from. Um, and then, oh, make sure you listen to the seven weeks coffee episode. That is what's in my mug. Um, not tea, it's coffee. I don't Mine know why too. Can't. Awesome, awesome. Um, and the seven weeks coffee is actually genuinely really, really good. And we want to support them. Listen to the episode. It came out this past Tuesday. Get ready for diapers and degrees. It comes out August 19th. It's going to be so good. You guys are going to love it. It's perfect for this time in a post real America. Yes, um, also two, we are, and I, we both know, um, the host and she's amazing. And you guys, you're going to love it. Like, it is something that you're going to want to share um, with all of your friends, with all of your female friends specifically, because in this post row America, there are going to be people who are pregnant that didn't plan on being pregnant and are going to have to go through with their baby. And we want them to know that they are not alone and that they can be successful. You can do it. And no matter what the other narratives are saying, we want you to know you can do it. And diapers and degrees is going to show you how. It's going to you're going to hear testimonies from other people. It's it's going to be great. You guys are going to absolutely love it. Um, and then we are finishing Subverted, a really really good book. It's um, actually so it talks about if you consider yourself a feminist. I think this is a book that you absolutely should read, whether you consider yourself a feminist in by today's standards or by the first wave feminist standards. It talks about how the sexual revolution took over the feminist movement, how initially it really was just about how to get women the ability to vote, how to be able to own property. Because for a while, women, for credit cards, you could not get a credit card in your own name. It had to be in your husband's name. And then all of a sudden, this person, we're supposed to find out, comes and just takes over the movement. And it now became part of the sexual revolution, not just um, feminism. So really good book, really, really good book. Um, join the Patreon. We're going to be going over it live on the Patreon. Also, too, I wish I had it, um, but our Saturdays are for weekly TCAP mugs are out. If you are a member of the Patreon, your mug is on the way to you. And the mug's on the way to me, so that's why I don't have it for this episode. But it's all on the way to you. Um, if you are already in the Patreon, you would have gotten it for free. If not, it's okay. Go to thosewithgirls.com slash merch. Um, I think that's it. That's it for the housekeeping. Yeah. So let's get to it. Mel, how have you been? Any exciting news? I do since have the last some time you were here. News. 
Just kidding. It's this hand. Oh, I was like, oh, okay. I'm engaged. it up. Ooh, yay. She's very pretty. I love her. Um, yeah, Jerry and I got engaged in March, was it? Uh, was that March? No. It was uh, Labor Day weekend. And that's May. Okay, maybe it was May. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Labor Day weekend is May. Okay. <laughs> I was like, you've definitely been on the podcast since March. Okay. You might not have been since May. Okay. Yeah, so Jerry and I are getting married November uh, uh, 12th, one 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 two two two, And we're excited. His Korean family's coming to the States to vacation. And so we take that date specifically so that way they would already be in the states and be able to come to the wedding so i'm really excited to get married it's been a lot of ups and downs emotionally for me mallory has all the tea on that um (laughs) and i just want to say while i'm talking about it engagement season is hard um Maybe not for everybody. I think maybe the movies and shows make it seem like this is a blissful time and you are forever in love and then you get married happily ever after. And I think that those feelings come and go, but I think during the engagement season is also a time of discernment, of uh, Mm -hmm. really asking the harder questions to yourself and the person and really digging deep do I want to marry this person? And as a Christian, as a Catholic, for me, marriage is a sacrament and I believe it's a covenant. And so it's not, it's more than, um, you know, a license and a civil union. And so I think that's why it's uh, scarier maybe. And especially uh, living in our modern age, I think some, a lot of us come from brokenness uh, within our families, within just things that we've experienced. And so I think there's, there's that added fear of um, carrying on that brokenness into your own marriage and family. And so, um, but it has been a time of growth and I am excited and I'm thankful um, to the Lord and the Holy Family. And I know that God's got us and he's going to carry us through. And I know that Jerry is my person and I am his person <laughs> and, <laughs> and everything's going to be okay. I started Invisalign yesterday. Wait, 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 oh, wait, okay. wait. I want to comment on what you just okay, said. Okay, sorry. I think I was just going like... <laughs> News. Like and, and this, this is this, all right. Episode. No. Um. I just wanted to add, like, I think it's really good that you're sharing with us that it's not always like peachy keen. Because you're right. It's I think not. movies make it seem like the engagement is just the best time. There's no stress. Your mom and her six sisters are going to plan the whole thing <laughs> while you sit back and eat the cake. No. You and your boyfriend eat the cake. It's not like that at all. And I think movies make it seem that way. And I think it's very real for you to say, like, it's stressful. And I think, you know, especially when you're young and we've already had these ideas of what we want in our wedding. We want this exact thing. And then you come to the realization, okay, so weddings are on the cheap side. It's 15000 this Yeah. Point, on the cheap side. super expensive. And no idea. Yeah. You don't know until you start planning. Yeah. Um, not to, you know, get into my trauma, but um, when I was planning <laughs> my wedding with my ex, I remember we were, I was looking up all this stuff and... I was seeing this. I was looking at the price of this. The dress is so expensive. Yeah. The oh my goodness, the venue the venue is ridiculous. You're looking at all these different venues. I remember thinking like it would just make more sense for us to just go on a vacation somewhere and just come back married because like <laughs> this is all uh, this is and that and then you have to make sure. And then I remember we sat down and we made the list of how many people we're going to invite, and we were like, oh yeah, we're gonna have like it'll. I think. We were saying, like, it'll be, like, medium size. We, our first initial list was, like, 500 people. That's too much. That's too much. And you have to trim that down and trim that down and trim that down and trim that down. Like, the goal was, like, 500 people max. Yeah, it was, like, well, we were both trying to invite, like, 
our second grade teacher type thing. It, it was <laughs> just unrealistic. <laughs> the guy who um, taught you computer when you were in the first grade for one semester. <laughs> like, yeah, it, the it was a your guy that's just really nice to you. At your- <laughs> right, that I see all the time. <laughs> The guy at the gas station. I'm actually kind of friends with my gas station owner guy. <laughs> I, I would have invited him, you know. I want him to be yeah. a part of it. Um, so, yeah. So, like, yeah. but the point being, though, is, like, it's, and then you're, like, okay, well, I can't not invite this person because um, you have family. And family's going to, so it, it is a kind of a stressful yeah. time. Um, and I think that it's good that you're sharing that with us. Yeah. Um there's that stress that that definitely is an added factor of just wedding planning. I think Jerry and I are very outgoing people that have planned, organized and hosted events in the past. So maybe if we weren't the people we were, it would be way more stressful. Um, But we've been planning everything. And I think the planning itself has been going well. The stress of the finances is is that is the most stressful thing um just how how are we gonna that's just being real yeah and it is keeping it real and i and you know it's the thing that people aren't posting about on social media of uh yeah weddings cost money and i hate this and please support my wedding fund please and thank you you know and um We'll pass the plate around at the end. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. We're going, we're definitely <laughs> going to do some type of like dollar dance or money train. There's going to be <laughs> something at my wedding. And, um, and then, like I said, just, it is, um, scary unless you're like, you just met this person and you're still in the honeymoon phase and then you're getting married right away. And that happens for some people and great. Uh, Jerry and I have been together going on four years. And so there's a lot of, you know, we already know each other. The mushy gushy feelings aren't necessarily there, not all the time. And so there's a lot of seriousness of, you know, it's scary. Do I, is this my person? Do I want to be with this person? And, and again, I think that's something people don't really talk about that there's those emotions too. And that, um, it is still part of the discernment process. Cause you have until you say, I do that the freedom to leave and, uh, yeah. the freedom to choose. It gets harder the closer it gets, I will say, you know, so like, that's why, trying to make decisions before but it does get hard like you know while you're up there it's going to be a lot harder to say you know what no as opposed to you know when he asks you to get coffee for the third time and you don't really like him you know (laughs) so just a heads up everybody like yes it does get harder (laughs) as time goes on and um a friend of mine gave me the analogy and this isn't any like hard season you're going through is there's always the crucifixion before the resurrection. And so Mm. I think that an engagement season where you've been together so long and maybe you're having these feelings of I'm scared. I don't know. Is this the person, but I love him. And, and then how are we going to pay for this? And where are we going to live is another like real question. um, We have to still you know, figure out an answer to, um, I would say right now is kind of that season of, of a crucifixion time. It's hard, but I trust in the Lord that when we are married and we receive the graces from the sacrament of marriage, that it will be a resurrection season, that, that prayers will be answered, that things will make sense and that together and with, the graces from God that, you know, it will be a season of like, okay, all that pain was worth it. Cause now here we are. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> and last thing I want to say on, on the whole marriage thing is I think as Christians, it is something that we take. I think I know as Christians, it's something that we take very seriously. So the, I feel like the, from what I've seen, it seems if the world is kind of like, oh, yeah, I love him. He makes me happy. And if you just go off of that, then like, oh, you know, he doesn't make me happy anymore. Next. He doesn't make me happy. Next. Next. Yeah. Next. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But as Christians, we're like, there's going to be, de- like, the reality is 
no one's going to always make you happy. Yeah. Your parents don't always make you happy. Yeah. Your lover doesn't always make you happy. Your kids are not going to always make you happy. So you have to decide. <coughs> Sorry, y'all. <coughs> you have to decide that you want to be with this person. And that's something that I think, I think non-Christians can have that mentality. But mainly Christians, I do believe, have this mentality. Because we, you know, once you're in it, you should not get like divorce should not even be on the table yeah should not even be on the table so that's what makes it a little bit more intense where it's like okay this is people not people i have heard people say um things like well you can always leave well if you're a christian i'm sorry you can't if you marry someone you cannot always leave i got into a discussion with someone on instagram who later on followed me and uh, we were talking about like some, we got on top of divorce somehow mm -hmm. and um she's made the comment that like it's perfectly fine to divorce a man let me see if I can find it really quick she said something like um let me see I definitely think sorry like go ahead yeah as Christians if you believe marriage is a covenant between you your spouse and God then yeah, it's not something you can say, well, I don't really love you today. This is boring. This sucks. Goodbye. Um, it's, it's not like that. It shouldn't be like that. And it's so, it's so, it's, it's, I think it's a, definitely a part of our fallen culture that divorce has become so prominent. You know, we know people, we love people that their, their parents are divorced and it's so common over 50 percent. it shouldn't be even in, it shouldn't even be in normal you know it should not it and, should not um i um like we like i said if you view marriage as a covenant then divorce shouldn't be an option i do think though if there truly is abuse if there is absolutely your safety or the safety of your children no question about it please leave immediately, if not sooner, you know. What frustrates me about these conversations is like, I wish we didn't have to add that disclaimer, but no matter what, everyone's going to say, well, what about abuse? Absolutely. It's a no brainer. If someone's yeah. abusing you, you must get out of that relationship. It's for your safety. Um, but we always have that. We always have to put that disclaimer because people don't give you the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Obvious. Like, we're women. We're humans. We're not. We don't want someone to stay in an abusive relationship. That should be automatically understood. What I was going to say is, so she made the comment. Um, um, you just might have a husband who's a loser and doesn't help you. That's also a very valid reason for divorce. But you married well, the loser. Like you should have figured that out before you married the loser. Then a. B, yeah, that's we all go through figure seasons. it out before you marry the loser. <laughs> right, right. But also we all go through seasons. What if maybe he's a loser now? He had a um he was just thrown out. He was in the military. He uh had to leave because his something happened to his foot. And now he is at home because he can't do the job that he normally mm -hmm. wants to yeah, do. And now he, you have he to, can't do anything. You he have goes, to stick by him through that exactly exactly like and that's part of being a human and that is our problem in society in general we don't stick with people we kind of just like well they're no longer serving me yeah. all right next oh this person's no longer serving me next and we can't do that to yeah. people we're doing that in friendships i i know of people who do that in friendships too and that's not healthy that's all part of the self-love it's no longer serving me so i'm going to do this <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> That's not, yeah. I'm sorry, that's just not right. That's not how, that's how we got to where we are as a community where we have all of these social issues, things that are wrong with us is because we're not caring about each other in the way we're not working through a situation. This person did this to me. Okay, let's discuss it. We're not moving forward. Um, and another thing that this is super random, but also too, in that same conversation, we had this, we got to a point where I said, well, actually God doesn't necessarily want us to be happy he wants us to be holy and sometimes what we think is our happiness does not align with what is actually holy so then yeah. i mean i don't know what to tell you he prefers for us to be holy not happy now does that mean that everything you're going to do for the rest of your life is sad you're going to hate your life you're, you're going to feel this awful 
dread. No, you're not supposed to feel that. But at the end of the day, like holiness over happiness. Yeah. Um, and that's just something we had in the conversation. Maybe someone needs to hear that. I hope you receive that well, whoever hears it. Holiness over happiness. Yeah. Anyway, and like anything when, you want to add, Mel? <laughs> well, and when you marry, you're supposed to be marrying in sickness, in health, and rich, and poor, for better, for worse. And so that means you're you're signing up to say, I'm gonna stick by you, no matter what, in the good times and the bad times. And um, and it's not not to say that that's gonna be easy, not to say that you're gonna be happy like how you said, but I do think that that will I, lead to your sanctification, sticking through that and saying like, this is our cross to bear for the time being. You've been discharged from the military unexpectedly. We lost, you know, uh, half of our income or whatever, but we're going to keep going because I love you and I'm choosing that because love is supposed to be a choice because you don't feel it mm -hmm. all the time I don't look at mm -hmm. Jerry all the time and think wow I love this guy you know um I get really <laughs> angry and that but that's life as a girl and as a human loving some choosing to love somebody and i know for me personally one thing i really love about jerry and i hope that other girls will find this in their partners and their spouses is somebody who will stick by you and jerry has shown mm -hmm. me that throughout our relationship in the highs and the lows and the beautiful and the ugly he has stuck by me and that is part of marriage is sticking by your partner. Like how you said, Mallory, um, I do think, um, you know, there's also that culture of, uh, like swiping left or also like, mm -hmm. there's always somebody else out there because we've been so exposed mm -hmm. to social media and, mm -hmm. um, like somebody said to me, like, even if you're not on Tinder or Bumble, like just having social media, like being alive in this time, being young, it's kind of just a part of our culture of like, oh, well, there's always somebody else out there, you know, and mm -hmm. um, maybe the, the paradox of choice. There's so many options. You're, you can't choose one. Um, or you, um, but you know, 50 years ago, pre social media, there wasn't that, well, you know, there's somebody else out there, you know? So this is your person. Maybe we can do a whole episode just about I, I was engagement just thinking and um, marriage prep. I, I was, I have definitely more content to, to give on that. Uh, I, I was just thinking that we need to do something like that. Um, the other new thing I wanted to say is that I got Invisalign yesterday. And ooh. so for all the viewers on uh, YouTube, here's my Invisalign. Yay. <laughs> and I got it Yay. because I've been wanting straight teeth for my wedding day. Like that's been a desire of mine. I didn't think that would become a reality, but I finally decided it is literally now or never. I do it now or it's just not going to happen. I'm just not going to have straight, straighter teeth for my wedding day. And it's happening. So if you hear me Thank sounding God. a little funny, that's why and I just wanted to share that. <laughs> and yeah, message me if you're considering Invisalign and you want some advice. And I, I would love to talk with other people on their Invisalign journey. And, um, those are the main new things in my life. <laughs> Wedding planning cool. started Invisalign. Cool. What is the best thing about Invisalign so far? Um, I would say, um, I like knowing that it will come off really soon. Whereas I, I don't know how long it is for people with braces. 
Um, I like that, you know, from far away on this video, you would have no idea I'm wearing the uh, Invisaligners. And I like also I can take them off and I can floss normally, whereas br people with braces, I don't think they can floss normally. So I'm glad I have that freedom to brush my teeth and floss normally. Yeah. I'm just excited to switch it out every week and that's going to be exciting. Um, I don't know how it is for people with braces, but for me, I have my aligners for the next three weeks. So I know every Wednesday morning when I wake up, I get to put on the next tray. So that's exciting to have, I guess, that like autonomy of, okay, here we go. Next level up. <laughs> see what happens. Do you feel, so like the first day you felt the shift almost or no? Um, I would say, uh, yeah, at the end of the night yesterday, because yesterday was when I got them, I definitely felt sore and it felt um, hard to bite down on the this like squishy thing the dentist gave me. He told me when after you brush, after you eat or floss or whatever, when you're putting them back on, bite down on this chewy thing. It looks like a miniature pool noodle. And um, it really hurt when I bit down. So um I do feel a slight soreness in my mouth, so I do think change is happening, though it's not a visible change. Is change. The <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Melanie, I'm happy you're here. Happy to be here, you Melanie. TCAP. I don't have any new updates really in my life, and we are 20, almost 30 minutes in, and we really should get into the stories. Um, so without further ado, let us do some tea. We have three, four, three stories. We have stories. So clink. Here we go. Our main story is brought to you. Oh, I meant to, whatever. I'll do the sound thing later. Our main story, you're going to love, well, you're going to love to talk about it. Is brought to you by Hollywood Reporter. Um, Mindy Kaylee explains why she wishes parents of college students would take them to freeze their eggs instead of gifting them jewelry and vacations. The actress and mother of two is says it would give women the ability to quote focus in your twenties and thirties on your career, and yes, love, but know that when you're emotionally ready. And if you don't have a partner, you can still have children, end quote. You want me to go first or do you want to go first? Uh, I'll go. Well. Okay, go ahead. I am completely anti freezing your eggs. This is horrible. It is completely disordered. And this is just another, like, result of our fallen society that does things out of order because god designed us with a plan and a purpose and there's a reason why you uh, meet somebody you get married then you have children and when you don't do things in that order chaos happens and so i believe also that freezing your eggs is also disordered because it is it takes a um it creates a life outside of the marital act i believe as a catholic that sex was made um with two purposes in mind and sex is good and god created sex i've heard some people it's um, an act even of worship. consider it as a like a form of worship to god and i think that's beautiful and so the purposes that I believe are twofold. One is for the pleasure of spouses. We could say bonding. And one and the other is for openness to life. Not that you make a baby every single time you enter into the marital act, but that there's at least an openness to procreation because that's what happens. That's where babies come from is sex. So again, bonding 
and babies, AKA openness to life. And so I believe if you have having one without the other is disordered and I believe is a sin against God. So for example, contraception is, um, is bonding of spouses, but there is no, um, openness to life. You have closed off, um, that openness and you have a barrier between you and your spouse, whether it's a physical barrier, AKA condom diaphragm, um, or a hormonal barrier. There is a barrier between you and your spouse and you're closed off to the possibility of life. Like I said, you not necessarily making a life every single time you have sex. And, also, um, creating a life outside of the marital act would be creating a baby without the bonding. So this is also in vitro fertilization, making babies in petri dishes, which would be the primary way I think you would u- utilize these eggs is through IVF, which I believe is disordered not to say if somebody was created that way they are disordered or they come from sin remember a human life in and of itself pregnancy in and of itself is not sinful maybe the way how you got there was aka premarital sex or um, sexual violence or IVF those things I would say are sinful but the life created is not a sin so I just wanted to kind of separate those two. And I think that's good that you separate it because there's people listening who might not know this perspective. And yeah. I think that's good. You and yeah. again, this is me as a Catholic. I don't know what your opinion is on egg freezing, Mallory. Uh, but to conclude, don't you worry, I'll share. Okay. So that's one um, perspective as a Catholic of why I believe that freezing your eggs is outside of the marital act, um, it would be creating a life outside of the bonding, outside of the marital act. And again, you need both the bonding, sex, and then openness to life. And so if you're making a baby without sex, that's disordered. And if you're having sex without openness to life, disordered. All And I think that that's sinful. Um, but outside of my faith, um, there is a really good documentary. I believe it's free to watch on Amazon Prime called Exploitation. And I've seen it. She actually had me watch it once. Okay, cool. And you as in she, like you. Oh, did. Me, me? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah, cool. you had me watch it like 2 years ago, I think. Oh, I have no <laughs> memory. Like, yeah, like you're the she. Oh. <laughs> okay. And yeah. so Exploitation and I encourage Please, everybody, if you think egg freezing is a is a good, is progress for women, is a positive in society, please watch that documentary. Um, that documentary shows the stories of women. Um, you can almost say it's uh, similar, not equal to like the stories of um post-abortive women who are hurting after abortion and like the pro- the por- pro-abortion industry is never going to elevate their voices. And so similar, there's stories of girls, uh, women in the exploitation movie sharing about how uh, freezing their eggs, donating their eggs is what they, you know, believed they were doing, that they were donating their eggs to give to other couples who I guess were dealing with infertility. That's a whole other conversation. Um, but I would assume freezing the eggs is part of that process of donating eggs. And some of these girls, uh, women, um, ended up with cancer. I believe uh, one of the girls uh, talked about in the documentary died after. And so there's just other stories of girls like that who like the egg freezing, the egg donating surrogacy industry is never going to elevate their voices, at least I don't think so. And, um, so please watch that movie. It's been a, it's been a minute since I watched it, but I do remember it talks about why there's, um, health risks and it's not talked about girls go in, um, donating their eggs. And 
I just, in the past week, driving around my city, San Antonio, I've seen this, the same billboard in different places talking about, I think you could get up to $60,000 to donate your say, eggs. You can get bank. You can get good money. And I can totally understand if you're a college age girl and you're, you know, you're struggling to pay rent, pay for classes, whatever. That seems like a good deal. Um, but there's a lot of health risks to that. And so I just wanted to give that perspective too, that like objectively, I would hope everybody, faith or no faith, wherever you are politically, we can get behind that and say, oh, women should know that there are serious health risks and side effects. And we should, you know, uh, learn about these women's stories and not pretend like they didn't exist. They don't exist. Yeah. So those are my thoughts. I think egg freezing is horrible. Um, but I do think I can, I can understand the appeal, like how the, how, like how the, the article is saying, of uh, live your best life in your twenties, your thirties. And when you're ready, your eggs are there and you don't have to worry about your fertility when you're 45 and finally ready to settle down after your career or whatever. Your thoughts. Yeah. Mary. My thoughts. Okay. So. I have thought about getting my eggs um, frozen numerous times. That has crossed my mind. Um, and I'm coming at it from this perspective. Uh-huh. I am 28 years old. Tw- I'm sorry, I'm 27. I am that sound that was going around. I'm 27 year old. I have no prospects. I have no money. And I'm scared. Like, that is me. That So... And I have no idea if marriage is in my future. I would like it to be. I would hope it would be. With the right things are going, it might not be. I, you know, I can't. There's people who are like, yeah, I know God has. I can't confidently say that if I'm being honest. I want to be a mother. I've wanted to be a mom my entire life. I assumed I was. Up until recently, I'll say, I assumed I was going to be a mom. Like, it never crossed my mind that it is not a possibility. It never crossed my mind. I mean, even when I was younger, like I, I played mom all the, I I don't know. Like I'm not always loved kids. I've always worked with kids the past couple of years. I haven't because of the life circumstances I'm in. So, and that's been different, but like, I've always volunteered. Like I've just always wanted to be a mom. I think I'd make a pretty decent mom. I'd laugh at my kids, but probably a lot more than I should. So, you know, obviously there's areas of growth in that, but you know, I think I'd make a great mom. You would make a I've wanted, great mom. Thank you. I've wanted that a long time. So I thought about it because it was like, well, you know, God, if that's, if a spouse is not in the cards for me, I at least could be a mom at the very least. I mean, I could, I think I'd be good at it through. So I looked into it. Um, and to, what's so funny is Minnie Kaplan did this on her show. She has a funny, hilarious show. There is a plot where she starts a fertility, um, clinic. And, um, that's where I, honestly, that's where I, got, I was like, oh, I didn't really know too much about this. Let me see. This was in college. I was like, hmm, well, let me just look at this. I've never really heard of a freezing your eggs. What does that even mean? So I did some research and as I got older, I was like, okay, you know, clock is ticking. Cause that's the thing too, you guys, like, this is a tough pill to swallow, but you're out half your eggs by 30. Half. Now, you know, I read somewhere that you still have tons. Like half, as in like, you go from like, this isn't the number, but for example, like 8,000 to 4,000. How that 4,000 is still half of 8,000. So that's still less than 8,000, but that's still a lot. So not those exact numbers, but that's what I heard. So like, all is not lost if you get pregnant after 30 like it's not over but the reality is like it's harder the reality is like you know especially in the conservative movement in or in the conservative world in general men are not really looking for women in their thir- like i'm just being real um and it's harder and harder once you hit 30 and i was looking at my watch especially after my you know last really big breakup okay realistically this is not 
me getting married is <laughs> becoming lesser and lesser possibility. So I looked into it and then I started doing more research and then I started getting involved in the pro-life movement. And then I really just started thinking about like, why is it that I want to have children? Doing the more research, I saw the movie Melanie suggested. Very interesting. I didn't know a lot of the things. I just remember, I don't remember all the logistics of it. I remember that someone died. I remember that like the chance taking your eggs out really does not mean that you're going to have a baby. It just means that you took your eggs out. It Those eggs can get lost. They can die. They're, the chances of, okay, you took the eggs out. Great. Now you got to find a sperm donor. Okay, cool. The cost, I didn't realize how expensive it was. Like going into it, because on the show, um, young college girls were doing it. And, you know, when I was doing research about it, people weren't really talking about the cost. They were just like, yeah, this is good. This will, if you really want to be a mom one day, this is a great thing to do if you're thinking. Because here's the other aspect of it. And I think that conservatives don't realize this especially when you're talking to other conservatives, especially single women, there's tons of girls out there like me. I was not one of those girls that wanted to put my career first. I'm in a career and my career is first because I have no other option. If I don't work, I'm just a bum at home with my parents. Like no offense to bums or anything. Like I'm trying to insult anybody, but like I have a career because I need a job. I'm 28. I can't just 27. I keep saying 28. I'm 27. I can't just sit at home. You know, it's not because I want to put my career first, not because I don't want to be married. That's not not the case at all. It's not because I don't want to date. You know, because there are women who are like that, who are like, no, I'm not going to date till I'm 35 because I want to focus on my career. I'm not one of those. And I've talked to girls. Some of you are listening right now. You're right there in the same boat as me. You just haven't met anyone for whatever reason. And I think sometimes the conservative movement forgets that. So they make all these comments and assumptions about people. And it's like, no, some of us are focused on our career because we have no other option. Anyway, so I started looking at that stuff and I'm like, okay, I, this, okay, something feels wrong. So then I started going more in the pro-life movement and I just started learning more about like, what is the purpose of having children? Why do we feel the natural need as women to want children? Yes, there's women who don't want kids. That it would be the abnormal. The reality is that's the abnormal. No offense if that's you. Not, I'm not saying anything's wrong with you. I'm just saying that is the abnormal. Naturally, women want children. Why do we feel this? Why does it hurt when a woman gets an abortion, even if she wanted an abortion? Why is she still sad? Why are children so important? Why are they so precious? Why is it so hard to raise a child by yourself? Why is it so hard to raise a child without their, as a woman without their biological father? Why is it so hard to raise their child with two of the same genders. So I started learning and re doing more research and learning more about that. And I just came to this conclusion that like God's design is man, woman, child. And unfortunately, if I don't have the man, it is outside of, it's disordered. Like Melanie said, um, it's disordered and I don't have God's best. God's best is man, woman, child. If I don't have the man and I just go woman, child, it's not God's best. It's disordered. And if I truly love a child, I would want the child to have man, woman. I would want the child to have a mom and a dad. So it's really selfish. And I'm not saying that if you are in the situation, you still feel this way. I'm not calling you selfish. I'm saying for myself, I came to the realization it is selfish for me to want to create a child without a husband because also too realistically i mean growing and here's the reality of the situation too like i grew up with both my parents almost all of my friends growing up had both their parents i can only think of one person who did not have both their parents but their parents were both very very involved uh their parents were divorced but they were very very involved i wouldn't even know where to start to raise a child for myself like i don't have any I just personally didn't grow up around that. So I don't even have any role models in that degree. So there's just so many factors that like, it's just disordered. What is hard and, you know, I'm, I don't want to say I'm speaking for conservative women like myself. I don't want to say that, but like, what is hard about it is that sometimes we have these desires that are just so strong. And one thing that like, 
one thing that I think about is we want things really badly and it's not necessarily that God doesn't want them for us or that God doesn't want these things because it's not bad to want to be married and have kids. That's not bad at all. But if that's just not God's plan, it's just not God's plan. And like what I've started praying is like, God, let your will be done. So if your will is for me not to have kids and like thinking about that almost makes me like want to tear up. And like, honestly, when I was reading this and thinking about it, I did tear up. I'm really glad I'm not doing that now. <laughs> like, this is a <laughs> space, Mallory. <laughs> no, but like, if that's not God's plan for me, then okay, he has something else for me. That is great. Because at the end of the day, God is good. So whatever happens, it is going to be for my good. And it goes back to the holiness versus happiness. Mm -hmm. like, that's something yeah, God's really been exactly. teaching me right now. Like, he doesn't, I don't want to say he doesn't care about my happiness, but like, what matters is holiness. Like, how am I working to become more holy? Me creating a child without a husband, um, that is more for happiness, yeah. not holiness. And then the other day, I have to put holiness above happiness, even if that means that I don't have something that I really, really want. I, I cannot express how badly I want a daughter that I want to also say, in case God's listening, that looks like me. Nothing wrong with daughters that look like their fathers. I just cannot imagine... <laughs> birthing a adorable little girl and she looks just like my husband that would be i would love that child nonetheless but i really would like a mini me that's just me that's just me personally what i want i could totally see so, like happening. <laughs> what like me having a mini me yeah like, and dressing the child oh okay. match you absolutely we would be match honestly if we could match till you know she's 18 19 i'd love that <laughs> but my whole point being is like that I'm not saying God doesn't want that for me. I'm just saying like that might not be his plan and that's okay. There's so many other ways this desire can be fulfilled. Um, you know, being a good auntie, um, you know, we're honestly working in the pro-life movement. I, you know, the more I get involved and the more I do things with the women that are pregnant, I'm going to get my fill of babies. Like, it's not like, it's not like there aren't, the whole purpose is babies. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. So, you know, I think that what's, this goes back to what we've talked about before is like the idea of like pleasing yourself. So hearing Mindy say that, I totally understand where she's coming from. I totally understand the hardness of it in the sense of like, it is really hard wanting something that like you, because what, what's so hard about like relationships and stuff like this is it's not just you and like sorry it's not just like me wanting something and like for example like a career I can work hard to get this career to be in a relationship someone else you gotta like mm -hmm, <laughs> yeah. else to work hard too yeah and that's what's so hard so like I get it I get like that feeling I get that like it's really it's so hard out here dating especially in today's climate with so many other factors guys are looking for things that just really you know guys love to say women are looking for the one percent i'm sorry i don't know those women i think that you're looking at the wrong i think you're looking at the wrong women <laughs> um <laughs> being honest like i can probably send you some girls right now pictures of them and you make your comments so like but my whole point being is like just the way like melanie was saying in the swipe right swipe left culture is very it's incredibly difficult so it's such a hard situation to be in and like i would not i don't want anyone else to be in this like having this strong desire knowing that there is kind of a way to get it but knowing that that's not god's best that's disordered that's not what's going to make you holy um so like reading this is just sad because it's because it also shows that like other people are feeling this way too. There's yeah. other people out there who really, who might not have even put their career first, but they just haven't found someone yet. Um, or they did put their career first and maybe they're kind of, you know, cause like, I think she said it or I saw somewhere else. Someone was like, one thing I wish is that I did freeze my eggs because I'm getting older. I forgot. I think it was Serena Williams might have said that or something like that. She wished she freezed her eyes because she's getting older. Something along those lines. Like, I've seen that recently. So, like, it's just, it's sad that we've gotten to this point in society. Um, 
that we've gotten there. So yeah, that's my two cents. More like uh, $2, but <laughs> that's how I feel. And if you're out there and you're in a similar situation, no, you're not alone. Um, God could have some money for you. He could not. Um, it's possible. I think the prayer should be God's will be done. And the older we get, the reality is women have a bio- biological clock. Men don't. <laughs> not fair. Um, but <laughs> this is how God created us. And that's okay. Like, there's nothing to write home about. You can be frustrated. Like, dang, I wish I could be 80 and still, you know, even have eggs at that point. I'm pretty sure. Well, you know what? I guess anything's possible. Um, but <laughs> realistically, what'd you say? I said anything's possible. Yeah. There's Elizabeth in the Bible, Sarah. So it's anything possible. is possible, <laughs> technically. Just, <laughs> technically, but realistically, you know. Um, <laughs> But this is just how it is. And yeah, I wish I had, I wanted to try to end it on like a lighter note, but I can't really well, keep it I have lighter. some thoughts um, to okay, add to what you're it. saying. Like when, while Please you do. were talking, I was, you did remind me that I believe children do have a right to a mother and a father. And I know that there are people who work like in the children's rights space to be a voice and advocate. I'm for trying children. to have one of those ladies on the podcast. Nice. Then. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I'm trying. children who, you know, are not of, of complete, you know, developmental um, age to consent to things. They can't speak up for themselves. Like, no, we have a right to a mother and a father, you know? And, Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that I was reminded of that, um, same thing, whether you're wanting, I, I remember I knew a friend in college who was considering the idea of, adopting a child like he also had the fear of I'm never going to get married and what if I just adopt and um I think he discerned out of that idea but you know similarly just to just put it out there whether you're a guy wanting to create a life or adopt a life or you're a woman wanting to create a life or adopt a life um or people that are in same same sex relationships also wanting to adopt or create a life it is disordered that god designed us to be man and woman and that children have the right to a mother and a father uh i wanted to add too i um do think that there is beauty in um you know, sacrificing your desires, like saying, God, I really want this thing, but I lay it down at the cross. It doesn't make sense right now. I'm not sure why, but I'm surrendering this to you. So not to say that that's easy, clearly that's easier said than done, but like how you're saying, Mallory, holiness over happiness. And so I think too, if the goal is heaven and sainthood, Um, I think it is okay. Like it, it is a wise thing. It is so good to humble yourself and just lay down those desires to be praying that prayer that you're praying of your will be done. God, not my will. I really want this thing. I don't know what the future is going to look like, but I, Jesus, I trust in you. And then the last thought I have is that there are, I can think of several women in the pro-life movement and uh, uh, either like, you know, more maybe well-known women or just women in my personal pro-life life life, um, in Texas that are not married. And so I think that that also is a calling. And I can think of other people too that are men who are unmarried and have like chosen that like full-time ministry work, dedicating myself to this cause the rest of my days as a single person is the calling that God has given me for my life. And, um, so not to say that that's everybody's mindset, but I, I do know of some men that have that mindset and 
yeah, so I just wanted to share that point too, that I think that there are people who maybe are called to full time, like ministry work. And because the reality is, you know, like, um, you know, a single person can give way more time than Mm -hmm. the married person with five kids at home. It's going to look a bit different the way how we help in pro-life movement. Like you can always still do something, but I'm sure it's going to look a bit different. Probably, you're probably not going to want to go out to the sidewalk every day with, you know, five kids, you know, just like with a pregnant belly. Yeah. Just like giving one example. So I do think there is beauty in somebody that has said, you know what, I recognize, like, this is the calling God has given me, and I'm going to make the most of it. I'm going to say, okay, God, I really had this desire, and I'm laying it down, and I'm going to serve you the best I can with, you know, the rest of my time on earth. So, just wanted to give those thoughts that I've seen other people, I can think of other people. I can think of five people in my head of who've like, whether purposefully or not have given (laughs) themselves to the movement as single people. And yeah, I think it's beautiful. And I'm thankful that some people have, you know, answered yes. Yeah. And I think, to wrap this up, I think also to realizing that like, it's not the end of the world. I think sometimes it feels that way because it's something that you desire and everyone else around you has it. And, and the concern, I, you saying that, you know, people, I, once we get off, I'd love for you to send me their accounts because I do (laughs) no like, well, I, I don't know any a, and then B like, I desire, like I, while I'm in this season, I want to be a good steward of my singleness and I just feel like I can't find any like there's nobody really that I know that's like everybody is married or has married with kids or is engaged and like even my personal life like I'm kind of I have one friend and Isabel that are one friend like that lives in Charlotte with me that's single and then Isabel like that's kind of it in my entire like closeness life oh and Victoria um not the married one you guys know but one me and the one you know anyway so like that's kind of it everyone else around me is like um so and I know I've talked to other girls online who are in the same situation but we don't live near each other and they're in the same situation where everyone else around them is so like it does feel kind of lonely and I want people to not emulate or not even look up to but I'd like to see how does walking in singleness in your best of ability without being because there's other type of single people that are like you know there's nothing wrong with this if this is your thing but I don't want to be this person that's like always like watch me as I prepare for my husband watch me be single and prepare for my husband like I don't that's great there's nothing wrong with that but I kind of don't I personally don't really like that type of like single lady vibe like I'm preparing for my husband I kind of want the hey I'm doing what God has called me to do right now if I run into him he's I'm following God. He's going to run next to me. He's following God. Ooh, we're going to run into each other at the cross. Yeah. Here we are, me, him, and Jesus. Like, that's more <laughs> what I'm looking for. Um, instead of just like, <laughs> everything I do is for my husband. Um, yeah. I just don't like that. So if you know people who are uh, single and not like that, I'm afterwards, please send them my way. I know. I feel like other people, like, I feel like some people do say like, I just, I gave it to God. I stopped looking. And then that is when I met my person. Um, I have heard that perspective and I want to add too. I think there are people who get married, you know, early thirties, mid thirties, like it happens. And so, you know, people do that. And so, no, I I'm, I'm just want to give you hope. Like, I don't yeah. think all hope is lost for Mallory Finch and finding her future <laughs> house. Yeah. I think, and then after this, we have to change the topic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, and once again, I'm not trying to speak for everyone in my situation, but I think other people would probably agree that are in the situation. It feels that way when you are hearing 
it's only on our side of the aisle, which, you know, positive, negatives of everything. You're only hearing on our side of the aisle, get married young, get married young. Oh, if she's not married by 30, yikes, watch out. She probably had some sort of hoe phase. What? And you only hear that on our side of the aisle. I've never oh. heard comments like that. Oh, girl. Well, how I, I'll send you some stuff. There's well, people who say some really bad... hanging out with those people? Well, no, no. This They're is toxic. more of, like, these are social... These are commentators. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, yeah, These are commentators. And, you know, there's nothing... There's some validity to that statement, I'm sure. But that's not my situation. I'm thinking mm-hmm. of two girls who listen to this podcast. That's not their situation. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I think... A lot of it is discernment, too, because if it's a good man that is a Christian following God, he can use discernment like, hey, we just didn't meet. And that's why she's still single. Yeah. As opposed. Yeah. So, like, there's always those things. It's just sometimes these things get into your head like, oh, dang, is there something wrong? I don't know. Anyway, that's enough of that. You guys do your research on um, getting your eggs removed and I just don't do it. throw in a little... Um, add there um for all the catholic people out there or even if you're not catholic there is the uh, national catholic singles conference every year oh. <laughs> where single catholics i guess from all around the world come together and listen to some awesome talks i've never gone i think i would like to go just to like meet other catholics but it sounds like it's a great place to meet people if you like know you're single and you and other people know they're single and then you just like go so sounds like fun um i know some people well one person specifically that married someone she met off of catholic match so i think like the christian dating like app space is is another thing to try um i just want to recommend it i know mallory has tried everything (laughs) under the sun um I even tried yeah, the Catholic that dating. conference that probably you didn't know existed until I said it. And then, and then Catholic match and like uh, uh, Christian mingle and farmers only.com. So like, <laughs> I think those are cool. Yeah. Yeah. These are all options um, for people out there. Well, <laughs> like, why not? I just like, why not? Like just shoot your shot. Like just do the thing like the way how Jerry and I started dating is because I just shot my shot and I flirted and I said uh, what I claim to be the best Catholic pickup line. So have you been discerning the vocation of marriage lately? And now we're getting married. And of course there was a lot of things in between that story, but, (laughs) but my point is, is that I shot my shot. I was like, you know what? why the heck not? I don't know this boy. I don't know if I'm ever going to see him again. Hey, like, do you want to discern marriage with me? Like, I just did it. And so, um, I just want to give that advice to other girls. You know what? Like, just do it. I think, like, why the heck not? If you, like, want to go to the conference, if you want to try the, if there's some, like, Christian speed dating thing, like, Google it. Like, is there Christian speed dating in my area? Like, why the heck not? Like, I really enjoyed being single because I dated and I was like, okay, why the heck not? I'll go to ice cream with you. Like, <laughs> um, well, I was going to say, you can even, so what I would desire to do, I just got to <clears throat> get more matches, um, is even like, <laughs> I don't say practice dating, but like, you know, I realized I need to brush up on some dating skills, have not. I didn't think it was that weird, but the last thing that went on, the guy was like, oh, you've only been on two dates since your breakup in 2020? I was like, yeah, huh? And he's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. You're in your 20s. And I was like, yeah. And then he got quiet, and then I was like, okay, I guess that is a little strange. Um, Only been on two dates in two years. Okay. Now I can say three, three dates um, in two years. Um, (laughs) About to be three. But the... (laughs) <laughs> what I was going to say is um, I realized I need to brush up on my dating skills. So even just, you know, needing someone to kind of mesh a little bit, um, at least practicing 
you know, meeting someone and not being awkward about it, I think would be good too. I want to give a recommendation for a movie I saw. And this movie is available on pureflix.com. The movie is called The Dating Project. It is a documentary came out in 2016. You can go to the dating project movie.com the dating project movie.com and again it's available to watch on pure flicks and this movie is a documentary basically there's this professor at i don't remember what university but she gives her students every semester an assignment to go ask somebody out on a date And I don't know if this is like a sociology class or what, but the purpose is to try to revive a dating culture and teach people how to interact with each other, like how we once did. And so I'm pitching the movie because in the movie, there's practical dating tips of how to ask somebody out, um, how long should the date be, how should you hug for the first time. And I recommended this to a friend uh, many moons ago, and he got married (laughs) to the girl uh, uh, using the tips he learned from the Dating Project movie. So just want to pitch that movie. Um, You follow some real life people and you see their experiences, like asking people out on dates and how did the date go? And um, it's really exhilarating. And learn some tips from that movie. 10 out of 10, do recommend. Okay. I'll have to check it out. Like, I think da- part of the reason why I feel like dating is hard now is because it's hard to know what people's intentions are. They can say, I'm here to date, but like, what does date mean? Which means you have to go into, okay, the first time, just so you know, I'm absent. I try to get that out of the way like within the first couple of hey what's ups just you know so we're not wasting our time um and you know i think that's kind of what makes dating hard is just knowing people's true intentions so i do think that's why like christian mingle catholic match all that stuff is good because you can at least hopefully have a baseline even though i hear sometimes there's always going to be those outliers um yeah some bad apples yeah but these are good things thank you melanie for the suggestions Um, really quick, one of our sponsors is American Woman Beauty. Use the code MAL15 to get 15% off your purchase. We are an hour and seven minutes in. (laughs) We've done one, um, topic. The next two articles are really kind of in a similar vein. Um, I wanted to get more into the Serena Williams. I'm just going to like kind of sort of talk about them and this is just a different episode today serena williams um she essentially she's retiring and she is saying that she this is from vogue in her vogue article those of you know she's retiring she says believe me i never wanted to choose between tennis and a family i don't think it's fair if i were a guy i wouldn't be writing this because i'd be out there playing and winning while my wife was doing the physical labor of expanding our family. Maybe I'd be more of a Tom Brady if I had the opportunity. Don't get me wrong. I love being a woman. I loved every second of being pregnant with Olympia. I was one of those annoying women who adored being pregnant and was working until the day I had to report to the hospital. Although things got super complicated on the other side. And it almost did do the impossible. A lot of women don't realize that I was too much pregnant when I won the Australian Open in 2017. But I'm turning 41 this month and something's got to give. It's kind of the same thing what we've been talking about this whole time. Um, And then I just want to say this other thing, too. We can just compare them really quick and then call it a day. Selena Gomez um, in USA or I'm sorry, US Magazine. She Selena Gomez revealed her hopes for a family and why she doesn't see herself staying in Hollywood for the rest of her life. Selena Gomez complete dating. Oh, that's not (laughs) Um, quote. I hope to be married and to be a mom. The only murders in the building star 30 said on the August episode while speaking with her hopes for the future. Gomez made it clear that she doesn't think she'll stay in the limelight. Eventually I'm going to going to be tired of all this. So I'm probably going to devote most of my life to philanthropy before I peace out. Her (laughs) friends laughed at her dark tones and she just said, I'm just keeping it real. 
<laughs> which is funny because like I feel that but I mean it's kind of all goes back to what we've been talking about which is so interesting that this is like such a strong topic and womanhood but I'm glad we're talking about this I'm glad we're having these conversations I just really don't remember talking about this at all when we were younger Selena not Selena Serena Williams upset essentially she's saying that she um is not able to be the best tennis player she wants to keep playing but she has a woman body so she has to stop um unfortunately she would love to keep playing but she was born a woman and selena gomez saying you know what as soon as i'm able to i'm out of here like i want to have my family i want to leave the limelight and i think it all just it all goes back to at the end of the day like even though Serena Williams is acting like she's upset that she is um, having a ba- or like she has to stop. I, at the end of the day, it seems like she wants a family. Like earlier in the article, she said that her daughter um, was playing a game and they're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And the little girl says a big sister, which is so cute. And she prays at night that God will give her a baby sister, which is adorable. Um, but my point being is like, at the end of the day, we all, it, it sounds like everybody innately, innately, innately wants to be a mom, wants to be a wife, wants to have children. And it all kind of comes back to like your perspective um, and how you view the world and how you view, view children, how you view your career. It's just all three of these stories are pretty much connected. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think relating it with the egg freezing um, promotion of that first article, I think that there is just such a message that you can't be a career woman and have a family, or if you do, you can't do both well. Um, But I think there's, like, Abby Johnson, Lila Rose, um... Kristen. I think, uh, yeah, Kristen Hawkins. Those are just a few women that they show um, you can do both. Like you can Same follow her, the actress. You can follow your dreams, have a family, and succeed. And you don't have to choose. And so it seems like, like with the egg freezing, like you can't do both focus on your twenties and your career and then have a family. And then like with Serena, she's feeling like, well, if I was a man, I wouldn't have to do this, but I have to, um, I will say like, realistically, like if she's pregnant, like she shouldn't be doing all that. Like, yeah, but I think that's part of sacrifice and that's part of being a woman. And I don't think that, I think we've made being a woman to be such a negative. Like it's like a, our, uh feminine is a negative term at this point like we've made all womanly things a negative that like people automatically just put that in the i gotta do it category as opposed to like yeah i get to do it you know what i'm saying yeah that it's like i i have to rather than i want to like i want to retire because i want to i want to focus on my family like oh but if i was a man i do think there is some truth though to what she's saying i don't mm-hmm. is is serena married yeah Does she have okay she's married yeah then, then i'm curious like if she wanted if the husband could why could he not be that support she's seeming like she wants well to- continue with her tennis career the thing is she had to take if she wants more kids she'd have to take months off yeah being pregnant i think like also wait side note just so you know she's married to the creator of reddit oh i had no idea so they have the money the support i mean they have everything like to yeah her but realistically because like if she was just an actress it wouldn't be that big of a deal But, like, she's a sports, so it's hard on her body. So, like, I think she has some validity. Like, if she was Tom Brady, uh, Giselle is doing all that. There's some validity to it, but I don't think it takes away from, like, who you are. Like, you're married. I mean, you're having sex. What happens when you have sex? You have, you know, like, I just, I don't know. Yeah. I can definitely uh, try to understand her perspective and her frustration, um, and I think with, 
with Selena, I think her saying it's either my career or family, I think that's fine. You know, like that's what she wants. I just wish we could see more examples of people who say, you know, I can do both and it's okay. And that means I'm not going to star in as many movies or make as many guest appearances or late night talk show hosts, whatever. I'm not going to do as much of that, but I can still do the thing I love and have my family. And I, yeah. Bring the baby. I, uh, and the yeah. appropriate settings. And, the appropriate mm-hmm. settings. and so I wish, um, but I, I respect what Selena's wanting. I think that that's wise and valid and that's what she wants and it's good i don't think it's wrong i do think like i said i wish there was examples of hey i can do both and you can too and uh i do think like i said there's some truth to what uh serena said of like if i was a guy i wouldn't have to be making this decision i think that is sad i i wish that the husband and if he's making bang founder of reddit then huh <laughs> yeah Couldn't you have the the support system and keep playing tennis but i mean your body's changing and i think desires change like what you want in life changes and it's okay and to hang up the racket i was gonna say like i was talking to my friend about this realistically she was saying that like people as a woman athlete they usually stop at like 30 she's almost 41 so, like, she's been doing this for a really long time. So, her body probably wants her to stop anyway. And, I mean, I feel like maybe just saying that it's the family thing is an excuse. I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, it's time. Because thinking about, like, how all of the ailments she probably is facing. So, yeah. I think it's all... To wrap it all in a nice, pretty bow before we exit out, I think this all goes back to holy versus happy. I'm saying this a lot because this is what I'm going through right now in my life with, like, God and, like, what is he teaching me or whatever and, like, my experiences. I'm not necessarily in the best season of my life. I can't say that I'm living, laughing, and loving in these conditions. Um, I cannot say that. But what I can say that is I'm trying to do what makes me holy because that is what god has called us to do so this all goes back to like the holiness versus happiness like not saying that you know serena quitting um tennis is making her more holy what i'm saying is like um sacrificing things and the bible talks about making sacrifices okay a sacrifice she has to make is to not do tennis if she wants to make sure that her body is the best it could be while she's pregnant for her child. Um, Selena is recognizing that, Hello. you know what, she <laughs> might not want to is bring just her here? baby into a well you know, um, casting <laughs> call with a pervy, I don't know. To continue the discussion. The pervy people. She's probably I that. But think... you guys know what I'm saying. Like, it's all, like, connected about... Um, it's all connected in how we are to live our lives the best way as holy as possible, putting God first, no matter what. Um, if you're watching, you see Melanie disappeared, but that's okay. That's it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It was a little different. We talked a lot about, um, surrogacy thing we talked about um just about marriage and i hope that if you're listening and you're thinking about um life in the sense of like you're not in the season that you want you don't have that spouse or that person that you were wanting and desiring i hope that you can rest assured that at the end of the day god is good and god only wants um what's best so no matter what happens god is good um and i just that's something that i've been remembering something that that i've been holding on to um god is good so um i guess that's it make sure you rate review subscribe let us know if um what do you think like do you think 
surrogacy, I'm sorry, not surrogacy. Do you think freezing your eggs is like the new thing that we should be doing? Do you think that's a benefit? What do you think? Um, and yeah, thanks you guys. <laughs> Crazy.